Welcome to part two of this week's online lecture. In part two, we will investigate the moment of inertia of a rotating body. Here is a graphic of two cylindrical steel bars of the same mass being rotated. One is being rotated around the centre of the cylinder, while the other is more of an end-over-end -end rotation. Intuitively, the first steel bar is going to be much easier to spin. And the reason why it is much easier to spin is that its moment of inertia is smaller. That is, its resistance to rotational change is much smaller. The second one, however, is much more difficult to spin at the same rotational speed as the first, because its moment of inertia is a lot larger. This is intuitive, but I agree that rotational motion is not as easy to understand as linear motion. Let's compare rotational motion to linear motion. Here we have linear motion. We are going to consider two concepts in linear motion. The first is its linear velocity, which tells us the speed and direction this ball is rolling across the surface. And the second concept that you are familiar with is mass. This ball has a mass m, which means that its linear momentum will be the mass times velocity v. Now what about circular motion or rotational motion? If I've got a particle that is moving around this ring, it will have an angular velocity omega. Its angular momentum though, rather than its linear momentum, will also have a magnitude and a direction. But its direction is defined to be perpendicular to the plane in which it is moving. What I want to show you is what the angular momentum is equal to in terms of its angular velocity and its moment of inertia. What is the moment of inertia? Here is a randomly shaped body. I'm going to be assuming it's rotating around the z-axis. So what I want to know is what is the moment of inertia around the axis of rotation. I'm going to set it off with a certain angular velocity omega and then I'm going to look at a particle i, that is a perpendicular r sub i away from the z-axis. It is moving with the same angular velocity omega as every other particle, because every particle needs to sweep out the same number of degrees per second, because if they weren't, the shape itself would fall apart. So all the particles are moving with the same angular velocity but they have different instantaneous linear velocities. The linear velocity of a certain particle is the perpendicular distance times the angular velocity. So the particles which are closer to the axis have small instantaneous linear velocities, but the particles which are further away have much faster instantaneous linear velocities. If I know the linear velocity of a particle, I can also say something about the kinetic energy of that particle. So the kinetic energy of the particle is a half mv squared, and I can substitute v for the angular velocity so that I get a half mr squared omega squared. If that is the kinetic energy of each particle, then what would be the total kinetic energy of the entire body? All I need to do is sum up all the kinetic energy of the particles in the body. So if I know the masses of each particle, m sub i, then I can sum up the kinetic energies for all the particles by multiplying these masses by half the distance from the axis of rotation, r sub i, and by the angular velocity squared, omega squared. We can take the omega squared outside the summation and what we will be left with is half times the sum of the mr squared terms for all the particles. This sum is the moment of inertia. So now the equation for the total kinetic energy is equal to a half times the moment of inertia i times omega squared. The form of that equation is quite familiar for kinetic energy. The kinetic energy of a linear moving body is just a half mv squared, whereas the kinetic energy of a rotating body is a half 
i omega squared. So when we make the transformation from linear motion to rotating motion, my linear velocity v gets changed into angular velocity omega, and my resistance to linear motion mass gets converted to my resistance to angular motion, the angular momentum, i. So it is directly analogous. So the resistance of the rotating body to a change in its rotational motion about a given axis is my moment of inertia. We can see, of course, that the moment of inertia is axis dependent. So if we go back to our rotating steel rods, we can see why the first rod has a smaller moment of inertia and why it is much easier to rotate. We can see that each particle is much closer to the rotational axis in the rod on the left than it is in the rod on the right. So the average distance in the first configuration is much smaller than in the second, so the moment of inertia is smaller, even though they are identical rods. The moment of inertia is dependent on the choice of rotational axis. There is another thing I need to explain about moment of inertia. Just like in linear motion, where there is conservation of momentum, in rotational motion we have conservation of angular momentum. This is best illustrated in a video. This is a video of Natalia Kanunikova, who set a world record for the fastest spin on ice skates. This is not her world record spin, but illustrates the technique she uses to achieve high rates of rotation. How does she go about increasing her rotational velocity? What has she done? And if we look closely, we can see that she pulls her legs closer to her body. But why has this changed her rotational velocity? Well, in doing this, she has changed her moment of inertia. When her arms and legs are out, there is more body mass further away from the rotational axis, and so she has a larger moment of inertia. With her arms tucked in, she has a much smaller moment of inertia. Now because angular momentum is conserved, the initial angular momentum is equal to the final angular momentum. And so because the moment of inertia gets smaller, the angular velocity gets bigger. During her world record spin, Natalia Kanunikova achieved a remarkable rate of rotation of 308 revolutions per minute over five revolutions per second. This is the end of part two of this week's online lecture. Please continue onto part three.